Welcome everyone to Prophecy USA. Uh, Prophecy USA is a Bible study podcast specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. My name is Rick Pearson. And I'm Karen Pearson. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Yes, thank you for joining us. Uh, we usually begin our, um, our podcast, uh, by the way, um, Netanyahu just became the president, our prime minister again of Israel. And we think that's a good thing. That just We just got a phone call to let us know this morning that that has happened. So he's back in the driver's seat. We pray that uh, God will watch over Israel and use him mightily uh, in that sense. But we have two letters that I want Karen to read, uh, letters from people who are, are calling in, uh, who are involved in our Bible study podcast. And I'd just like you to uh, listen to these first one. What is that? This is from Luna. Luna. Luna says, I am listening from Scarborough, Ontario. Thanks for the interpretation of Revelation 17, 1. The woman riding the beast is the seventh nation, America. During 9-11, I was taken to Revelation 18, 10. In one hour is her destruction come. I realized that this is America. I had not heard any prophecy that it's America or any of the prophets say that America is mystery Babylon. God bless, as this is not a popular theory now. I have the study guide. Thank you. I will keep listening. Okay, that was from Luna. Luna, Luna thank you. Uh, Revelation 17, also Revelation 18, 8, 10, 17, 19, Revelation 14, 7, Isaiah 47, 9 through 11, and Jeremiah 50, 40, and Isaiah 13, 19, all talk about that hour of transition. It's very interesting to me that there's many prophets that are prophesying about America and what's coming and her future. And yet they're not telling us about the 53 descriptions or prophecies that America is already fulfilled. So that makes me wonder what they're hearing. And, and um, you know, we see through a glass darkly, but when you're a prophet, the number one thing that you stand on is this Bible. And if what you're saying doesn't line up with this book, then you have to readjust your prophecies. So I appreciate the fact that she made that statement. Yes, thank you, Luna, for writing in. Because there's going to be more people in the next two years talking about America being Babylon. I believe that's going to happen as we get closer. Now, just remember something. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah and Isaiah are the two main prophets that we quote, and they were rebuked by the other prophets of their day. We are quoting those same verses. It's not Rick's word. It's Isaiah's word and it's Jeremiah's word. So if those words were rejected back then, then and there, who's rejecting them here and now? Mm. Remember, if the thing does not come to pass, this is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. These verses, these 53 verses of America's description have come to pass. He has spoken it. He will also do it. He has purposed it and he will also bring it to pass. So that's, that's something for everyone to keep in mind. Watch what people are prophesying and look what they're teaching. And if a person says America is not in scripture and you know, and you've read our book, the hour that changes everything. And, and as Luna said, she's the seventh of eight providential nations. You should listen. It's okay to listen to everybody, but you need to discern. You need to discern. Are they tracking on scripture or are people just shooting from the hip and saying, thus saith the Lord? Are they prophesying presumptuously? So we try and we're, we are desperately trying to stay on this word. Now, there's some things you speculate on coming in the future. 
But when you, when your word lines up with this word, it's guaranteed it's going to come unless of course you're misinterpreting scripture and, and that's possible. But, um, thank you, Luna. We have one other, um, person I wanted you to read. We just got this letter yesterday from Norm and Cheryl. This is also from some fellow Canadians. Dear Rick and Karen, we love your show. We tape every episode so we don't miss one. We even rewatch shows that have so much information about the past and future prophecy. I'm sending a separate check for the new book, The Coming Exodus. I can't wait to read it. Your book, The Hour That Changes Everything, has been passed around all our believer friends and family. Everyone loves the information you have written. It's like you are reading today's newspaper. Our current media is so liberal, you can't believe anything they say are right. Keep up the great work. Sincerely, Norm and Cheryl. Norm and Cheryl, thank you very <laughs> much. Um, we've had many people tell us, Karen, thank you for telling the truth. Yes. And the reason they say we're telling the truth is because the people, the, uh, so many of you people are listening and you're following along in the Bible. And this is a book of truth. So you're thanking us for telling the truth because what you're doing is you're reading, studying to show thyself approved, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so fake news, you know, is full of untruths. And um, that's what's happening in our nation now. Uh, and Jesus said this, he quoted this in, in um, I think it's John 8, John 8, 44. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word, ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth because the truth was not in him. Now, folks, when you're listening to fake news, there's a lot of people on television, and they don't care if it's truth or not. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this, this angers me. When you're, tr all I want to know is the truth. And that's what we're trying to do in our Bible study and in our TV show is we're trying to find the truth. And it says here um, that the devil was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because the, there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. There's a lot of people on television. There's a lot of people on the internet and they're spreading misinformation and, and you have to be able to discern. And sometimes, Karen, we listen to the news and we go, well, we're going to have to wait and see if that, if that comes out as a truthful thing because time will always reveal the truth. Yes. It always reveals the truth sooner or later. And all the hearings and everything that we're having right now, um, hopefully in the next six months to a year, uh, there will be more indictments and they will dig down into things with politicians that we believe are crooked. And I don't want to call them out, but there's a lot of crooked politicians that are lying. They have lying spirits in them. Yes. First John 4 says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits or test them, whether there be of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Well, that false prophets, there's a lot of people saying things and prophesying, meaning to speak, and they're just lying through their teeth on television because they have a political agenda. And as we live in the seventh providential nation called Babylon the Great, absolutely nothing should surprise us. Remember, as Babylon falls into darkness, it says, sit thou silent, this is Isaiah 47, sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Chaldeans means demons. Demons are lying spirits, for thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms. 
The darkness, of course, refers to demonic activity. And this is confirmed in Revelation 18, 2. Babylon has fallen, become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. There is a lot of hate right now in America. There's a lot of division. And probably the most evident and most prolific example of lying spirits is in fake news today. Mm -hmm. People have an agenda and they don't care whether they're lying. They have no fear of God whatsoever. And their actions are literally fulfilling Bible prophecy. So if, if you, we have a lot of people call us and they say, uh, you know, I'm depressed. It's really getting me down. Folks, don't be depressed. Get excited because this is exactly what happens when Babylon falls like the sons of Issachar. We can see the signs of the times and the shifting, the sifting is taking place between the wheat and the chaff. And the chaff are a bunch of liars and the wheat are those who are listening to God's voice and obeying his word and discerning the signs of the times. Mm -hmm. Now, not only do we have fake news, but we also have fake spiritual leaders and fake prophecy. You know, if I want to prophesy something and I say, you know, I can see change is coming, change is coming. Well, what does that mean? If I say, ah, uh, there's a shift, I see a shift, there's a shift coming. Well, well, what does that mean? Nowhere in scripture does a prophet stand up and say, change is coming. In the next year, people are going to die high-ranking people. Well, no kidding. There's 150,000 people a day die around the world. Soon, we've got all kinds of politicians now in their 80s. Of course, some may die. But the, the prophetic, um, the, the prophecies that are going out, here, here's a prophecy. If things don't soon change, they're going to stay as they are. <laughs> now, how, how is that? That's a pretty good prophecy. You think that's a good prophecy? I think I could, I think I could say that the Lord told me that if things don't change, they're going to stay as they are. Well, that's not prophecy. Prophecy is more exact. It's more detailed. Look at how God prophesies through the prophets, and he gives us 53 biblical descriptions of Latter-day Babylon the Great, and do you know how many prophets are denying that America's in the Bible? Sad but true. Before they prophesy, they should read the Word of God before you speak the Word of God. Otherwise, you might be speaking the Word of fake, presumptuous. And we're not out to put other prophetic ministries down, but, but I think a lot of people need to get a checkup from the neck up and, and, and read this word before they speak a word. Because how can you speak about the future of America when you don't even know that she's already fulfilled the 53 biblical descriptions of Bible prophecy? You know, in, in 1999, I wrote a book and I had the World Trade Center with a bomb going off behind it. What put that in my mind for the cover of a book. Now, I never prophesied that 9-11 was going to come, but the picture on the book certainly showed it. And I feel that was a prophetic... Um, it was something that was revealed. It was something you. that was revealed, but I never said 9-11. Uh, we have all kinds of talking about COVID, but who prophesied that COVID would come? Who prophesied that? No one to my knowledge, including me. Right. But we know in Matthew 24 that pandemics and, and all this stuff are signs of the times. So in that sense, we definitely know that right now with what's happening in America, the darkness, the lies, the division, these are all birth pangs of what's going to come in the future. Now, 
we're we're getting near with the uh, midterm elections and i am praying and believing that god's going to get in and start shaking up the nation and and politically shake it up and try and get this thing back on track but we have to remember something according to scripture just like luna said the last day of America's position in Bible prophecy, in one hour she's taken out, unless she's not Babylon. But when you meet 53 prophecies and they're fulfilled, I think you can pretty well be guaranteed that the 54th is on its way. It's just a matter of timing. Yes. Can we have a revival and an awakening before that that timing comes, that one hour event. But if you deny that America's in the Bible, if you deny that and you're prophesying, I sincerely question the folks who are prophesying. I, I question them. I, I just, and, and I'm not saying they're false prophets, but I think people prophesy presumptuously from their heart, but they don't line it up with this book. And that's a serious, serious thing. Now, we have um, some news in newspapers that we're going to start reading, and then we're going to match it up with Bible prophecy. And so, uh, Karen, you have, you have an article that you're going to read, and then I want to I look at the news, and then I want to look at what the Bible says about the news. So let's, let's read that first article. The Canadian Liberal government has admitted in writing that they have an ongoing $105.3 million contract with the World Economic Forum to introduce digital identities for travel to Canada. Now, Leslie Lewis. Leslyn Lewis, Leslie yes. Lewis, um, she brought that up uh, in government and, and they finally rooted that out. Go ahead. Keep reading. The government finally admitted that they have a $105.3 million contract with the World Economic Forum for the known traveler digital ID. It's no longer a con conspiracy theory. It's a contractual fact. Okay. Uh, what is considered a digital identity is far from just an identity. This is not just an identity, folks. This is leading to something. Now, you have another article, yes. and then we're going to get into the word, and I'm going to... Yes, this is from the Government of Canada website. In Budget 2021, the Government of Canada announced the $4 billion Canada Digital Adoption Program to help get your business online, give your e-commerce presence a boost, or help digitalize your business operations. Uh, they call it CDAP for short. CDAP provides funding and support to businesses as well as training and work opportunities for young Canadians. Commitment to inclusion. The Canadian Digital Adoption Program upholds innovative Canada's commitment to providing inclusive programs and cultivating a workplace, <clears throat> excuse me, that is both diverse and in inclusive so that we can best support the businesses we serve. Okay, we have a digital identity and digital currency. Remember the frog in the water. Slowly you warm it up until it boils to death. Folks, these are birth pangs. Birth pangs of things to come. Now society today, the fake news, they laugh at this book. They laugh and don't believe in it. And yet, they're fulfilling it. Now in Revelations 13, 16, we're not here yet. But what I'm saying is these are the birth pangs of what's coming in the future. We haven't arrived yet. The vision waits for its appointed time. But those who have ears to hear and hearts to understand and a spirit to discern the signs of the times, we know what's coming. When the Holy Spirit has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he heareth, that shall he speak, 
and he will show you things to come. This is what's coming. Revelation 13, 16. Let me read that. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The mark of the beast is already being technically designed. Justin Trudeau's government, who allowed 30 churches to be burned in Canada and then said from a political platform, he understands their anger. Mm. And that same man calls a national emergency when truckers and, and even people from our church who brought their families to Ottawa, he declares a national emergency because he doesn't like what they're saying. Mm -hmm. What is the spirit behind all this? You have to discern, you have to see when people are speaking out of the abundance of the, of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You see what this book says, and when somebody speaks against this book and goes in a different way, it's an anti-Christ spirit. Yes. So these are the birth pangs. And when a mother's gonna have a baby, she has warnings, she has sharp pains, warning signs of the baby's about to be birthed. And this is where we're at right now in America and in Canada, in North America and around the world. This is global. So Matthew 24 says, what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? And Jesus answered unto them, say, take heed that no man deceive you. Deception is the number one thing. When you listen to the news, I had a friend of mine uh, say to me that he can hard, well, I've had a half a dozen people say they can hardly listen to the news now <laughs> because it makes them so angry. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's a good sign because when somebody's lying to you and the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth inside of you is listening, he, he gets angry too. Yes. Bible says that God hates a liar. When people are outright, I listened to one um, network last night for about three minutes. And then I turned and I listened to Fox. And it was like, you were listening to two totally different opinions. And the one made absolutely no sense whatsoever. And Fox, at least, as I was listening, I thought, that's truthful. I was listening to Tucker Carlson. And I thought, Tucker Carlson is telling the truth. The other man on the other network, just lying through his teeth, twisting facts. And this is what a lying spirit does. You have every right to get angry. You have every right to turn that channel and say, I'm not listening to this. But you know, Karen, um, there's, there's some comedians that I listen to that you can't even listen to. True. And you said to me one day, <clears throat> how can you stand listening to that? <laughs> I had to leave the room. <laughs> she had to leave the room. And I said, because I wanna hear what the enemy is saying. I, I, don't, I don't believe it, but I listen and go, oh my goodness. These people are so twisted. Mm -hmm. The darkness that's between their ears. When the Bible says, if you reject me, I will reject you. He says to Babylon, get thee into darkness. He hands them over to the father of lies and the author of confusion. So this is what's happening in our society. Now, um, when, it, when Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you, he says, for many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. Well, those are false prophets, false religions. And last week we talked about testing the spirits. The first thing people like about our TV program 
is the number of scriptures that we use. Yes. Everyone that writes us says, we love the fact that you put so many scriptures on the screen. Now, we do not do that in our podcast because we just don't have time. But in our TV show, I spend about 30 to 40 hours of preparing and going through the word to prepare. And then we spend at least another 20 hours editing and putting all the scriptures up on the screen. So as I'm talking, the scripture comes up and then you know that it's not my opinion, it's this book's opinion. Yes. The written word must match the spoken word. And we don't give the word of faith, we speak the word of faith backed by the book of faith. Mm -hmm. That's how you can keep, for me, I have to, I, I am very concerned that I do not speak a word of speculation or a word of presumption on my part. And when I think God is speaking to me, I always check and double check. I just want to make sure that I'm tracking with this with the with the Bible. Now the second thing Jesus said there would be wars and rumors of wars. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that you not be troubled for these things much come to pass, but there have always been wars and rumors of wars. That's true. That every, it's, it's always been like that. Mm -hmm. then, then the third thing Jesus says, there'll be famines and pestilences. Uh, and there's always been famines and pestilences. And we're seeing that now. But the greatest famine in recorded history happened over 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think you have an article on that. Karen. Yes, it's the Great Chinese now, Famine. Now, I, we're reading this and I'm gonna tie it in. I'm gonna tie this in to, to current events and then into the Bible. And I'm gonna show you what we can see forming. We're not here yet with the New World Order, but the birth pangs are here. The digital technology is, is rising up in order to fulfill Bible prophecy. That's how we as the sons of Issachar can see the signs of the times. Now, we're going to read an article uh, which is not fake news, but it's, it's, um, it's telling us some facts. And you go ahead and read that. This is from the World Atlas, the Great Chinese Famine of 1959. To, through 1961. The deadliest famine in history took place in China between 1959 and 61. This cat catastrophe has often been referred to as one of the greatest man-made disasters. Though regional droughts did play a part, the famine was caused by a combination of political and social factors brought about by the People's Republic of China. These policies, namely the Great Leap Forward, which began in 1958, and the People's Communes, created a deadly environment that cost tens of millions of lives. Okay. There's some, there's some words in here I want to bring about. The famine was caused by a combination of political and social factors brought about by the People's Republic of China. It was induced by man. And the policies, namely the Great Leap Forward, which began in 1958, created deadly environmental uh, activities that cost tens of millions of lives. These policies included changes to farming policy and prohibited farm ownership, private ownership. Mm -hmm. And additionally, Peasants were redirected from agriculture in favor of iron and steel production, reducing farm outputs drastically. And all of this led to significant reduction in China's grain production and a widespread food shortage. While the government reported some 15 million deaths, experts agree that the death toll was significantly higher with numbers ranging anywhere from 20 to 50 million people died. Why? Because of 
government policy. Mm -hmm. They wanted to control the people and they took the farms away from the farmers. It was called the Great Leap Forward. Now we have something brewing right now. Our Prime Minister Trudeau was asked what country he admired the most, and he said China, not the United States of America, not some democratic uh, nation. nation. No, it was a communist nation that starved out 20 to 50 million people so they could have absolute control. And in Canada, we're shutting down all our oil and all our fossil fuels and all our nuclear plants while China is building 5,000 5, 5, coal burning plants, which is the cheapest way to produce energy. The only thing that he admires about China is their dictator rule. So the Great Reset, today is that what we call it, is dreamt up by Trudeau's father in the Club of Rome, who said we can use climate change, pandemics, and natural disasters in order to bring people into a one world government, which is what the World Eco Ec Economic Forum is doing right now. The same spirits, the same mindset that, that created um, the Chinese devastation of 20 to 50 million people dying of starvation, that same unbelievable urge for control over people is the same mindset that's that's orchestrating through the World Economic Forum right now. Yes. They want world dominion. Now God prophesied what would happen when a man leaves his governance. If you reject my knowledge, I'll reject you. This is what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And during the tribulation period, the Bible says a third of mankind will die through pestilence, through food shortages, through um, sores coming down. When you do this to God's people, God will do it to you. The World Economic Forum has no idea what they're going to unleash on their own families. Mm -hmm. We, as the body of Christ and the bride of Christ, will not see this happen. There is a pre-tribulation rapture, and it's, it's all in my book called The Coming Exodus, which we're going to have an advertisement at the end of, um, the of this podcast. But I've got all this written and what's coming, the future of America. Um, we are not going to see this, but we know. We see through a glass darkly. We can see things shaping up. We don't know the day nor the hour, but it's happening mm -hmm. right now. Now, the fourth thing Jesus said is there'd be many earthquakes. Of course, earthquakes, uh, these are the beginning of sorrows. And it says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Now, we're seeing right now some form of affliction against Christians through the LGD, LGBT, uh, through the transgender people. And it says, and they shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. So there's a falling away. Two out of seven churches are the only ones that Jesus recommends. Or not recommends, but um, says... Has an open door. Has an open door for. Two out of seven. So that's, that's about... 30% of believers are, are stay in line with this word and the other ones have itching ears and they follow after different teachings, different sayings, 
um, different spiritual leaders who lead them astray and don't tell them what's going on with the signs of the times. And then, of course, the sixth thing is that the gospel will be preached in all the world. Well, now, digitally, we have that. That's happening. Yes. In fact, you could hear this podcast and hundreds of thousands of podcasts now are all around the world. Mm -hmm. If you have an iPhone, you can get the gospel. Matthew 24 misses one item in things to look for. And that's one word, the technical advances mm -hmm. that are taking place right now. Yes. This is what's happening right now as we watch the technical advances we can see that they're going to fulfill the prophecies that are coming. The mark of the beast, the gospel spread all around the world. Now, the, the, the word technical advances is not in the Bible, but in Daniel 12, 4, it says, Daniel shut up the words and sealed the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased. So our knowledge is expanding I think it's doubling now every two or three years. Mm -hmm. Daniel says, I heard, but I understood not. And then it said, then said I, oh, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And God said, Daniel, go your way. The words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. The wicked will do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise will understand. Now, he says, Daniel said, I understood not the word that was given to me. He's talking about this word. But God says it's sealed up till the time of the end. He's talking about revelation knowledge in the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's one of the signs. Folks, do you know that for 2,000 years, we have never had a nation fulfill 53 biblical descriptions of Babylon the Great until right now. And here we are, waiting for the 54th description to come to pass. And we even now have people prophesying that don't even know if America's in the Bible. <laughs> this, is, this is revelation knowledge. There is a remnant the bride will have ears to hear what's going on. And they will have wisdom to understand because the vision waits for its appointed time. Here we are right now. You folks are listening to us all over North America. And you're, begin, you're giving, you're getting revelation knowledge that no other generation has ever had. And you turn on the TV and you can see prophecy in the Bible being fulfilled. The darkness has come into America and, and the false prophets on, on news channels are prophesying lies. The vision no longer waits for its appointed time. The appointed time is now and we're living in it. Now, Jesus said, or, or Paul said in Galatians, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. The word here is when the fullness of time was come. Mm -hmm. When the vision comes into fruition, we will understand scripture. People have not understood scripture then and there when they wrote it. But the wise will understand it here and now when it manifests. In other words, it'll be obvious. I, I can't tell you the hundreds and thousands of letters and emails we get of people thanking us for showing us that America's in scripture. Yes. And they say, finally, the dots are joining and we see clearly. But you know, folks, there are a multitude of people, leaders, who won't even sit down 
and listen to the research that we've done because they're teaching you that America's not in the Bible. And they're prophesying. How can you prophesy the future when you don't even know the past? <laughs> this, this is mind boggling to me. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul said how that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery. The, the word mystery is a secret revealed to a select group of people, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons, uh, let, me, let me get this, within, uh, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Mm. Do you know they never understood who Jesus was even when he was right in front of them? It was only afterwards that they went, he met this prophecy, he met that prophecy, he was the Christ. Yes. 300 prophecies he fulfilled. And here we are today in a nation, the seventh of eight providential nations. And it says that it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets. It's, it's revealed unto us right now what's happening in America. Our eyes are opened and we understand who we are in America and North America, Canada. So we have a global phenomenon taking place around the world. With regards to the World Economic Forum, with regards to the United Nations, this thing was created in the mind of Justin Trudeau's father in 1968 through 71 by the Club of Rome. 20 years later, 1991, they wrote the global revolution, they now tutor the United Nations, which, finds, which founded the 2030 agenda and is being marketed to secular humanists, political control freaks around the world, and it's being distributed through the false narrative of fake news. Mm. And it's called environmental social governments, ESG. Now, we're going to read, uh, Karen's got one more article she's going to read, and it's about ESG. Now, here we are sitting in Babylon. It says that the beast and the ten nations will hate the woman, and they'll come together with one mind. They hate capitalism. They hate the Judeo-Christian uh, protocol. They hate traditional marriage. And so they're forming something right now. They're built, the building blocks are coming together of how they're going to, how they think they're going to rule the world. And they've got something now that's penetrating all businesses, the banks, all the banks in Canada are on board. Um, all the technical uh, companies are on board and they've got something that they're going to try and control us with through ESG. Go ahead and read that article, Karen. ESG refers to three central factors in measuring an organization's sustainability and societal impact. ESG originated in investor circles, encapsulating an organization's long-term non-financial health. The practice began in the 60s with investors initially excluding tobacco stocks linked with the South African apartheid from their portfolios. While the concept has developed since then, the underlying principles of business accountability remain. Okay. ESG covers three core pillars. ESG is a way of getting into businesses, getting into the banks, and getting into you because you're going to work for these companies that are going to force you into following ESG. Mm. E is for the environmental. 
It considers how companies use energy and manage their environmental impact as stewards of the planet. So they're going to grade people based on their energy efficiency, climate change, carbon emissions, biodiversity, water quality, deforestation, waste management, and how companies foster their people and culture that has a ripple effect on the broader community. So it's all environmental. That's the first. Then there'll be a social. E, S is social factors. They'll look at companies, and this is the banks. This is government. And they'll control the money. And if you don't do what they say, you won't get your money. You won't get your digital currency. They'll shut you down. You want to go buy a car and they'll say, no, you don't meet your ESG requirements. You don't have enough non-fossil fuel uh, power in your house. So you have to go and buy a new grid for your house. And they will control you. The social factors they will control, they will look at inclusivity, the gender and diversity of what the company uh, has, employees, employee engagement, uh, community relations, human rights, labor standards. So in other words, if you have a company with 10 people in it and you don't have at least one transgender or one homosexual or one drag queen or whatever you want, uh, or whatever they it. want. Whatever they want. <laughs> if you don't mix up. So it's not a matter of you look for 10 people who are qualified, who can do you a good job. No, you've got to bring in people who maybe are diverse from you, but they're also diverse in their abilities to carry out the task. But you have to hire them anyway, or you won't get your money at the bank. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting that all the social factors, a lot of them go against scripture. They don't care. They're making up the rules. And then finally, governance. Governance considers companies internal systems of control, procedures, and how an organization stays ahead of violations. Um, factors considered are the company's leadership, executive compensation, audit committee structure. So the, the governing force comes into a company and they take a look and if you don't have certain things in place, we're going to cut your salary. You're not going to be able to buy certain things if you don't meet the criteria. This is how they plan to control. And it all came about by the Club of Rome. But what I want to emphasize is this could not happen without the digital revolution. Because now we are all dependent on these little things and the internet and this is how they can control you yes you won't be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast mm -hmm. and so as we look at all this if you don't know this book you will not know what's coming and if people the vast majority of people do not read this book but they are going to fulfill it, guaranteed. And the Trudeau government, um, uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau in the Club of Rome, he said that global governance could be maintained through climate control, pandemics, and certain things that would hold the population down for sustainability of the world. Yes. That's what they're doing. So, and this is what the Bible says then and there. This is from Revelation 17, 12, and Luna referenced this in Revelation 17, 1. Yes, she did. And she thanked us for, for showing her that America's in the Bible. The ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, ten geographical regions which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. This thing will not come into play until that hour takes place. And it says, these will have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. They will make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings 
and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Folks, we now today are in this verse. We are the lamb. We are the ones that they will try and overcome, but it says the lamb shall overcome them. Mm. We're on to this. We know what they're doing. We know where they're going because we know this book. So this is where we're at right now. And ESG will be used to war against the saints, but we will overcome until the hour comes for their fulfillment. Now the waters which thou sawest, wherein the, the woman sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. This is global, folks. This is Australia, this is Europe, this is happening all over Canada, the U.S. This is just not the U.S. This is a global thing that's happening. It's global. So it's just not one little section of the planet. And it's in your cities. They now have over 40 cities globally that meet that are trying to push ESG within the cities. One city at a time, one state at a time, one nation at a time. Peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. ESG will be global, but it's not here yet. Mm. The World Economic Forum has 3,000 members representing 117 nations and 2,500 heads of state. And it costs 28,000 US dollars to attend the forum meetings if you're not invited. <laughs> 28,000. And Fox just reported Tuesday that Brazil just elected a left-wing, very progressive president by very slim margins and YouTube has banned all people who are questioning the election. People in the streets are protesting and some are even being killed. Mm -hmm. So in, in Matthew uh, 12, it says you should, you should know the tree and his fruit. Either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit, O generation of vipers, how can you speaking evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The World Economic Forum is not a conspiracy. They're wanting to attain a one world government, but it will not happen until the hour comes in Revelation 17, 16, where it says, the beast and the ten horns will hate the woman and they will burn her with fire for God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his purpose. We are not there yet, but we're still in the battle. And according to scripture, it says the lamb will overcome until that day, that hour where God says, it's time to come up and I'm gonna judge this mess. And everything that they're trying to do to other people, God is gonna to do to them. He's going to give them a real food shortage. He's going to give them real climate change because when the ozone layer is burnt, all of the prophecies of God's wrath is going to pour out on them. When you starve children in Africa, get ready because God will starve your children. When you create this like the Chinese government did, sooner or later it will come back on you and when you do to God's people, what you do to a Jew, God will do to you. What they're going to try and do to us, they're not going to achieve it, but they're going to try. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, the rapture will take place, the hour, and all eight of those scriptures. And that's the 54th description of Babylon the Great. This is what is coming in the future. It could be 30, 40 years from now. It could be in the next year. In the meantime, we are to rise up and speak out and stand for the things of God and become warriors, not wimps. But stand up, speak out, and walk with God 
and be the best we can be until that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ rise first, and then we who are alive will be caught up and taken. So I want to thank you. That's, that's the coming exodus that's coming. And we want to thank you for listening. Folks, we've gone almost over our time limit. Um, this is the teaching today. And the title of today's message was Birth Pangs Preceding Prophetic Fulfillment. These are some birth pangs that are preceding prophetic fulfillment. And we're going to go on in our next shows. We're going to read more articles. And I'm going to show you in Scripture what the Bible prophesied then and there and what's happening here and now and what we see coming in the future. Mm -hmm. So my name is Rick Pearson. This is Karen Pearson. We're Prophecy USA and we're reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people realize. Now, as we close, if you want to find out what's coming in the future, you can get our next book that will come out in January. I think it's January 10th now that the book's going to be released. It's the coming Exodus. Listen to this, and we will see you next week on Prophecy USA. Bless you. Shalom. Um. History records that the greatest exodus in the Bible was led by Moses. But according to scripture, another exodus is coming. It's bigger, better, and is beyond any other mystery that is contained in scripture. But how does the United States of America play a pivotal role in this unfolding mystery?